Hi everyone, welcome to the CBSN Minnesota Morning Update. I'm Jason DeRush on this Monday morning. Are you ready? Are you ready for the week? Are you feeling it? We're feeling good here in downtown Minneapolis as we update you on the weather for today. Boy, uh, Saturday was absolute bananas, wasn't it? What was the high 86, 87? So nice. Too hot. It's too, a little too hot. It's all right. Uh, today, I would say too breezy. That is going to be people's reaction today. 20, 25, 30 mile an hour winds. It's, uh, you know, I call it a hang out of your hair piece kind of a day, uh, which may just be a reminder for myself. So uh, otherwise, 62, partly cloudy, kind of a meh, okay day. Yep, it's a Monday, that's for sure. Uh, lots of things starting to get back to normal, right? As more people get vaccinated, uh, we're seeing COVID-19 caseloads go down. And one of the good signs, I think, is the return of summer camps, right? A lot of kids are in school right now in person, and the summer camps are coming back. Last year, many were virtual only. You know, we we're still trying to figure out what was going on last summer, right? But the camps are back, and on our morning show, we are doing a whole week where we highlight various camps uh, that kids can still get into. I think a lot of parents are still a little hesitant trying to figure it out. What are the options? What can I do? What's safe? Um, but we know that it's good for kids to get to the outdoors. It's good to uh, run around. It's good to do archery and sailing and all of that. So today we are asking you, do you have a favorite memory from summer camp? When you were a kid, did you go to camp? Um, do you remember? Uh, the good times or the bad, we want to hear about it. And we'll share some of your comments in just a minute. Leaders in St. Paul are going to start this week addressing some tough questions. Whoa, what a stretch of violence in St. Paul over a four-hour window. Seven people were shot. There's the mayor and the chief talking about it. Three different shootings. More than 150 bullets were fired. Uh, all of the victims were told should survive. Melvin Carter, Todd Axtell, community leaders came together to try to talk about what's going on, what possible solutions are there. The chief said it's a holistic issue. It's not as simple as just hiring more officers. Mayor Carter says there is going to be a police academy this summer and hiring more officers is on the table. But everybody knows that doesn't solve things uh, for next weekend or the weekend after that. In many parts of the U.S., those COVID-19 infection rates have been easing in recent days. More people got vaccinated. Uh, I've got my two shots. I hope you do as well. Uh, as of yesterday, one out of every four Americans was fully vaccinated, but average daily vaccinations, as we expected, right? The demand is down, and so that average is sharply down. Uh, you know, some of this is the people with the most demand and the most need already got it done. Um, so now the hard work, right, of getting the other 50% vaccinated. In Minnesota, more than 2.5 million people have received at least one dose. And hopefully vaccines coming to kind of younger, like the 12 to 16-year-olds. Hopefully news on that this month. What a weird deal at the airport. A 9-year-old slipped past security and ended up on one of those conveyors, those baggage screening areas. Yikes. Spokesperson at MSP says a group of 20 adults were checking in their bags on Sunday and the boy snuck away and he got to the first level of screening. I don't know exactly what that means. I think it means he went through like, you know, like where you drop your bag, the bag drop. I think he went through the thing. They found him. It took about five minutes. But yowza. I'm not going to lie. Like as an adult, I've thought that it would be sort of fun, like to be in a bin and go on a ride through the conveyor system but like to actually be on it very very scary for those parents so good thing it's all taken care of you might want to do some camping this summer a lot of people have expressed interest a lot of demand and some good news from wisconsin the dnr is starting to open things up remember last summer in uh, fall they had like the playground sort of like roped off any observation towers in the state parks you weren't allowed to climb it it was back when we were really worried about uh, surfaces, right? Well, they've opened all that up. The DNR in Wisconsin is saying you also can bring more people in if you want to have like a graduation party at the open air shelters. You can have up to 100 people there 
at those shelters and group campgrounds. DNR says there's been a 25% increase of people visiting state parks compared to this time last year. Scary fire in Wisconsin overnight. Uh, historic paper mill is gone. Look at that. It just looks like a scene out of a movie. The George A. Whiting Mill went up in flames. It started yesterday morning, burned for hours, burned in the overnight. This is Menasha, which is a city south of Green Bay. Huge paper industry in the Green Bay area. Um, this mill was one of the oldest, but it closed about five years ago, so it's been uh, abandoned, but I'm sure still a lot of, you know, paper. It's very old wood structure, been around since the 1800s. Local mayor posted those initial pictures we saw on Facebook, said crews were working hard. See all the fire crews are trying to make sure it didn't spread. We don't know what caused it. Four astronauts back on Earth this morning after splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico. U.S. crew is the first to return at night. Since the Apollo 8 moonshot in 1968, they were on the International Space Station for six months. They flew back to Earth in the very same capsule that took them to space in November, which is kind of cool. SpaceX had to delay the homecoming a couple of days because there's uh, too much wind. And the plan was to switch that splashdown to sometime overnight. The winds were a little calmer overnight. A little weird to go find that thing in the dark. Uh, but everybody's home and everyone's okay. Minnesota's Asian American culinary scene. This is such a cool thing that so many chefs and bartenders have come together to really, one, speak out against Asian hate, and two, to raise money to try to make a difference. Total of seven chefs and bartenders, some of the best in town, are selling. Basically, you give them 100 bucks, and you get access to all of these videos where they share their recipes, they share their stories. Uh, Great, great stuff. It's called Minnesota Rice is the name of the initiative. And this message, I think, is really important. These chefs and bartenders are saying, we want you to love us like you love our food. Food is this catalyst into, you know, bringing people together. And, and in these videos, as you watch, you are not only learn a recipe or learn a dish, you actually see into the lives of these chefs and these drink makers and what inspires them. Yivang is so great. Uh, Minnesota Rice, 100 bucks. Got Jonathan Jansen there from Brothers Justice Whiskey. Uh, Christina Wen from High High and Ola Arepa. There's Christina. Uh, Lat 14 represented. Yeah, really great. Uh, all the money goes to the Coalition of Asian American Leaders of Minnesota. Uh, oh, we got the Zen Box team. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, this nonprofit works to protect Asian Americans against hate crimes. So the fundraiser goes on all May. In May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Diane Mua is taking on a new role with Belcor Bakery. Diane Mua has been the pastry chef, one of the best pastry chefs in the country. She has run Spoon and Stable uh, and been in charge of Gavin Kaysen's Belcor. And now she is focusing squarely in on the bakery, uh, which is really cool. They're going to open another bakery in St. Paul, in the Cooks of Crocus Hill, right on Grand Avenue. And Belcor was a Wyzetta restaurant, which closed during the pandemic. But they moved their kind of bakery equipment into Cooks at Crocus Hill in the North Loop. And it's been very successful in Minneapolis. And so now in St. Paul as well. So we're happy for Diane, who is going to run both of those bakery concepts. And I have a feeling you'll see more than just two of those Belcor bakeries. Terrific, terrific croissants, great sandwiches, good stuff. Changing of the seasons, not always pretty. The snow has melted. The trash left behind during the winter starts to make its way towards our waterways. And you can make a difference by adopting a storm drain. The goal is to stop the trash and the leaves and everything before it goes down the drain. This program has been around for 10 years, and in just the last year and a half, volunteers have removed more than 300,000 pounds of trash that likely would have ended up in the Mississippi River. So isn't this great? There are more than 300,000 of these drains that can be adopted, and there's a great program. I want to thank uh, Lane Christensen, who sent us in. He runs the Adopt-A-Drain program for Minneapolis. 
Um, 2,000 volunteers in Minneapolis have adopted 5,000 storm drains. Huh? 54,000 pounds of debris collected in 2020. So really good. So you can do this wherever you live. Uh, but Minneapolis and Lane sending in some of these pictures. So really trying to get the message out. Check with your hometown. And certainly if you're in Minneapolis, make sure you drop. Yeah, look at that kid sweeping away the leaves. Very, very good. It's really important. It really is. So uh, sign up at WCCO.com slash links. Let's talk about summer camps. Uh, summer camp memories. Todd never did it. Boy Scout camp he did. I remember going to Boy Scout camp when I was a kid. Best part was exploring the campground and learning that you're not good at fishing. Yep, <laughs> I get it, Todd. Thank you. Here's Michelle, who remembers having to take a swimming test. Oh, yeah. It seems like that didn't go so great for Michelle. Thank you. Uh, Kathy was a camp counselor. See, I think that'd be a great summer job. I've got a kid who's about to become 16. It's kind of hard to find jobs for 16 year olds. Singing around the campfire, serenading the campers to sleep. Very cool. Thanks, Kathy. Here's Jackie. Oh, Gen X latchkey kids. Yep. Sister and Jackie stayed home and watched a lot of TV and <laughs> played a lot outside. Yep. Nothing uh, that describes my childhood as well. Although we had, we had a cottage that had a series. Well, I'll tell you in a second. Let's finish uh, some of these comments. Kevin. Uh, love getting a taste of adulting. Didn't like sleeping with 20 other loud and smelly boys. <laughs> I hear you, Kevin. Thank you. And one more comment from Bradley. Favorite memory from summer camps? All those late night gatherings with friends around a bonfire. The s'mores, the sunset. Thanks, Bradley. My family had a cottage, not like a Minnesota your cabin that's like bigger than my house we had a small cottage no bathroom in the cottage there were like communal bathrooms but it was on a camp of around 200 cottages and so for summer we moved to the cottage it was about 45 minutes from my home and we had a, a program summer camp so we went to turner camp illinois turner camp that's where i spent most of my childhood summers so yeah i learned gymnastics i used to do like the parallel bars real good at the pommel horse yeah Good thing there's no video from those days. <laughs> Nobody wants to see Summer Camp Jason. Thanks for watching the morning update from CBSM Minnesota. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.